you know, just rip your copies of Winota up. Just rip your Winota up. You don't need it. Just play this deck instead, right? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Hello again. Welcome back. And thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to help support the channel. Demolish that thumbs up button before we get into it. Today, we'll be playing Lorehold Aggro. Don't worry, there's no Winota here. It's totally safe to play. We have a hard learn deck. There are so many learn cards within this build that it's gonna make your head spin. Converting with a 70% win rate within Mythic Top 100, you guys. Uh, this deck is putting out and doing absolute phenomenal amounts of work. And I think the true strength is it uh, within it is that people expect you to play Winota. You don't, you juke left, right? Uh, so that's a lot of fun. In the video, we'll break down the deck. Let's talk about the strategies, synergies, everything incorporated within the deck so you get a good idea how to effectively play it. We'll also watch the gameplay footage discussing our play lines and interactions, giving you an in-depth look at just how it will, you know, uh, interact with the other top meta decks right now in best of one and then wrapping up with our final thoughts and deck review uh, and this whole process will give you a good idea as the viewer uh, whether or not the deck is right for your personal play style and of course your wild card collection thank you again for your time and attention i really appreciate it let's get into the video All right, so 2.7 average mana value within the deck. It's a fairly quick, but not too quick, right? You know, we've seen on the channel, we go as low as 1.5 if we can. <laughs> uh, and there's no ramp here either. So it is a, it's a, a curve, right? You want to be playing a one drop, a two drop, a three drop, a four drop really consistently within the deck. We do have 14 non-creatures and 22 creatures balancing out with 24 land to support the heavier uh, mana value average in the deck. It is a lesson deck or a learn deck. Learn is a new mechanic within Strixhaven. When we cast a card with learn, we can either pull a card with lesson from outside the game, AKA our sideboard, or we can discard a card from our hand, allowing us to draw a card off the top of our library, which is really nice. First and foremost, we're playing with Retriever Phoenix. This card is such a bomb. For four mana, two power, two toughness with flying and haste, when it enters the battlefield, it learns if we cast it, right? Because we can return it from the grave, so that won't be casting. And that would be busted. As long as Retriever Phoenix is in your graveyard, if you would learn, you may instead return it to the battlefield, right? So that's kind of what I'm referencing here. An amazing card, right? Two damage consistently is going to um, annihilate your opponents. And it, it becomes much more than this as we begin to uh, kind of lace in some of the other strategies and synergies. Breaking away from the learn just for a second, uh, comboing or synergizing the Phoenix with Sparring Regimen. The Phoenix is a four drop, the Regimen is a three drop. So again, that one drop, two drop, three drop, four drop plays out phenomenally. When it enters the battlefield, learn. Maybe we've already got a Phoenix in the graveyard that can come out on turn three, a turn early, amazing. Whenever you attack, put a plus one, plus one counter on target attacking creature and untap it. That would further combo with the Phoenix, making it a three, three, and then untapping it so it can still defend. Mwah, we love it. So, so powerful. The Sparring Regiment and Retriever Phoenix, I suspect we will see a lot of uh, together in the future. And now we move on to a new addition to the deck from the previous version, Blade Historian. Four mana, two power, three toughness, attacking creatures you control have double strike. Wow, so the Phoenix, you know, can become even more explosive through the double strike. And moving into our next synergy here, we have Elite Spellbinder. This is a three power, one toughness with flying. Great with double strike, right? Through the flying and massive attack. When Elite Spellbinder enters the battlefield, look at an opponent's hand. You may exile a non-land card from it. As long as that card remains exiled, the owner may play it, but they have to pay an additional two to cast it, right? So that's fine and dandy. Synergizes great with the Blade Historian for double strike. However, the Spellbinder will also synergize with the Draineth Magistrate for two mana, a one, three. Your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. So foretell cards, gone. Adventure cards, gone, because they're both in exile, right? And we can exile any card we want from their hand with the Spellbinder. So that's gone too. And as long as the Magistrate remains in play, they cannot cast the card with the Spellbinder that was exiled, even if they have the extra mana, of course, because it's in exile, not their hand. So that is such a powerful synergy within the deck. The Magistrate and the Spellbinder is just like big wolves as far as I'm concerned. Filling in the gaps from here, we've got some more learn. Professor of Symbology, 2-1 when it enters the battlefield, learn, right? That gets us into our sideboard. It can also allow us to discard the Phoenix from our hand into the graveyard if we can relearn quite quickly, um, you know, for that free four Phoenix uh, 
which is great. We also have two copies of Guiding Voice, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature, learn. Similarly, the plus one, plus one uh, comes full circle quite nicely with the double strike through, you know, one of the things with flying that we happen to have, whether it be the Phoenix or the Spellbinder, it's going to do wonders for us. And, you know, if we can pull a Phoenix from our grave for one mana, you know, how do you not do that, right? That's just such good value. We have the Selfless Savior here just for protection. A 1-1, one, one, you can sack it. Another creature we control gains indestructible until the end of turn. And lots of the time, I'll be protecting something like the Draineth Magistrate. We don't necessarily need to protect the Phoenix because it can come back quite easily, but we can protect the Magistrate. We can protect the Spellbinder, uh, you know, even potentially the Professor, just so our opponent doesn't get easy removal on them and we can continue to bash in. And, uh, you know, my favorite protection is the Magistrate because you get the lockout through the XL, so it really holds a lot of value. But again, the Spellbinder's nice too because it has flying, and if you can, you know, double strike a couple times with those flyers, you're going to win the game. We also have three copies of Ignis Inspiration for three mana sorcery, dealing three damage to any target. Learn. So whether you're wiping your opponent's blocker, uh, you know, a, a value engine that they have in hand, like um, uh, the Edgewell Innkeeper, for example, um, this is going to take that out, and you get to learn for the Phoenix. And potentially, you can deal this three damage straight to your opponent and, you know, hit them with the double strike flyers for lethal, which is the bomb. And of course, we've got four copies of Shodun of the Skulls, an enchantment saga when it enters play. XL the top four, you may play them until the next turn. And then on the next two upkeeps, whenever you cast a spell this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Put them on the flyers, right? Put it on the spellbinder, put it on the phoenix, and then you can capitalize through the double strike again like we've been talking about. We've got the Snarls, we've got the Pathways and the Basic Lands, just for consistency's sake. Looking at our sideboard here, we have Academic Probation. Now, this is really nice in conjunction with the Elite Spellbinder, right? Because we get Foresight of their hand, and then we can lock out cards from their hand so they can't even cast them for the next turn, allowing us another attack phase, which is really cool. We can also, um, you know, stop one of their blockers from attacking and blocking activating abilities here, which is really nice for two mana through the learn, pulling the lesson into our hand. Reduce to memory. This is great. Uh, it was left out of the first build. <laughs> My bad. Exile target non-land permanent. Its controller creates a 3-2 red and white spirit creature token. You know, this can take care of an Ugin, right? This takes care of anything, so it has to be included uh, within our deck for us. Start from scratch. Destroy target artifact. You know, Henge, Cleave, Gonzo. And then we can deal one damage to any target, which is really nice as well. And then the Anatomy. Two plus one plus one counters on target creature. It gains Vigilance until the end of turn. This is just great for the Flyers for the excess damage. That's the deck, you guys. I hope you enjoy it. I know I have been loving this deck. Um, I'm having so much fun with Retriever Phoenix. And, uh, you know, keep coming back to it, making the deck a little bit better. In this variant, we added the Blade Historian, reduced to memory. Um, and I think that uh, it is performing quite nicely. Uh, the last version was good too, but that Blade Historian, oh my gosh, is that powerful with the Flyers. So uh, that's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed. Check out the link tree link for all of the goodies. You know, if you want to support the channel, get into the community. I even have my Spotify playlist in there, which is really cool. So uh, that's in the description, or you can give it a Google, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Enjoy the gameplay footage and don't go anywhere because we'll be back to wrap up with my final thoughts and deck review. Woo! <laughs> all right, enjoy you guys. Our opponent plays first with Luris. Uh, this is not bad. We do need some more land. Let's try to risk it, though. And I'm just happy to have hit Mythic, and now we can kind of play some original decks that just make our insides happy. <laughs> Whatever that is like. Ruin Crab turn one. Always. Always with the Crab. Hopefully they mill a few Phoenixes. Right? Obviously not. The Magistrate does stop Luris, and we have protection within the Savior on top of it. But, I mean, just the Rogue Mill is too powerful. It's too powerful, Wizards. Mm-hmm. Ultra annoying. You see? We should nuke it, but at the same time, we probably want to save it to nuke the Soaring Thought Thief, which, you know, obviously they have in hand as well. Okay. Heartless Act. 
We lose our protection. We do have indestructible here, though. I mean, it would be better to have a 3 2 than a freaking crab, I guess, right? The fourth land for skulls, but oh, you know, it's it is hard. Still no Phoenix in the grave. As long as they don't, uh, you know, into the story, right? That's kind of the classic narrative with the rogue deck. I imagine there's a counter spell for this. You dog. You friggin' dog. Alright, last card. They draw to two. Passage on the crab. They always do, right? And still no phoenixes. Oh, there's our first one. Okay. Lure us over. Really hard. Like, we're just gonna die. If they have a counter spell here, I'm gonna freak out. We can attack thanks to the regiment. Okay, we get a little hit in. We get a little hit. And now that we have Blade Historian in. We can use the Inspiration, Nuke the Flyer, I think. Get the Phoenix, and then the Phoenix has a double hit. Uh, you know, 3-3 three, three Phoenix for 6 damage. Okay, we still have Magistrate in play. I would love them to sack that Wind Robber. If they have a counter spell, we still have Guiding Voice. We don't really have anyone to defend. Well, the Phoenix can defend the Wind Robber. Let's try to get lethal. Just because they're going to mill us out, we can't play slow. It's a big hit. 8, uh, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 damage if left unblocked. No! Oh, I don't think they did the math. Didn't want to lose the crab. Kapow! Decent. I love it. Lorehold, Phoenix, top 100. We just beat rogues. Barely, but uh, do you ever really beat them anything other than barely? <laughs> <laughs> Our opponent plays first. We can allow it, right? Oh, mono white speaker! Draineth for a turn two drop is nice. I'm just wondering if we want to use the regiment to discard the Phoenix if we can get another learn in. If not, it's kind of risky. What? I'll allow it.
Magistrate is cool. It's not great. I mean, the Hallow Blade walks all over us. Um, ooh, the Shadow Spear with it. Yikes. So we might want to just nuke the Shadow Spear. That life gain is grody. So we need to grab the Exile, I guess, maybe. Regiment on turn three. It's not bad. Uh, reduced to memory. Kills, you know... Well, doesn't kill. It makes it 3-2. Uh, that we can kill later. Or we can nuke the artifact. But then they still have the... The big indestructible thing. Pretty hard decision. Because they can just re-equip the spear. Let's take the spear first. Magistrate is now a 2-4, but... Oh, I don't know if that's going to be enough, right? Cheese and crepes. 8 damage, 8 life gain. Okay. Okay. I see what's going on. Right, my that was a decent play by our opponent. We should have taken the exile instead, I guess, right? Because now we're still gonna have to deal with that freaking thing. Oh no, cancel. Beep. Artifact. There we go. We're still in a massive amount of trouble. You know, we only have one creature. It is a 3-5, though. We still can't defend, really, right? Like, oh my gosh. We get burned by our decision. Right, we should have exiled the Hallow Blade instead, left the Spear because they just replayed. So that's uh, too bad, and that is lethal. Good game. Wowzers! I cannot believe it. Uh, Blade Historian, right? It's it's a good card. <laughs> All right, I know you guys love to see it. A rogue rematch. No, they're not playing rogues. They switch it up, which is really cool for our video, right? Thank you, Techno Goats, for making our video better than it would have been. I don't want to fill it with rogue matches, right? <laughs> So we have the savior to protect the magistrate, which kind of thrashes their bone crusher giant. Mm. So as long as they don't have a frostbite or something, we need to keep this magistrate alive. They can't play because it's in exile. Maya, I know. We're supposed to be outside playing together. And now we have uh, this spellbinder to put other things in exile. Whoa. Nice. I guess we could have just taken Ugin. Right? That might have been better. I didn't want to give them all the mana to use within their smashing, though, either. Right? So it's kind of a... A weird decision, and we can always get to Ugin again. They can do two damage, you know, killing the Spellbinder. It's a play, but it doesn't... Like, they have to kill that Magistrate. Maya's going crazy. I don't think I've fixed her wheel. Oh, it's a little bit more in frame today. Hey, Maya? Yeah, show the people. Show the people what they want to see, girl. Get some laps in. Get it, girl! Get it, girl! Get it, girl! <laughs> oh, they can do three damage. I didn't think they had enough. So that's just so sad. Let's try to punish them for that. Six damage is a lot. You know, they have four available mana because they spent their treasure. So there's not a lot going on here. They could play the giant. It's just going to smash through it.
Let's see what else they have. Double Ugins, nice. So that could be problematic. Let's hit for six again. And I think we've got lethal next turn. Right, Maya? Get him, girl! Get him, girl! She's like, what do you want from me? Why are you yelling at me? Are we going outside yet? We just get it nice and easy. Okay, we didn't even have to get in there. Um, I didn't want to go for it and then have them have an answer, so we just sat on it for a second, and uh, I love it. Whoops, late to the uh, the match here, my bad. I got distracted in the stonks, you guys. Oh, no. Oh, no, HGG. I mean, there's not much going on here. They played some lands, they played uh, an eye twitch, and you know, we're trying to keep up. Right, we're trying to keep up. Sparring Regiment is a go. That's a nice turn three. If we can pull a land for turn four showdown, that's going to be really nice as well. Hopefully just progressing throughout our mana curve here. Effectively and efficiently. Our opponent does not like Sparring Regiment. What's up, Dante? Welcome to the show. Hope you're having a great day. We have... Uh, the Inspiration as well, which is one of my favorite cards. Um, you know, oddly enough, like, I don't know why, but it just seems good. Yeah, we don't really want to exile or uh, discard anything from our hand. Well, we actually could have and looked for a land. That might have been smart. Whoops. Let's hit with the Professor. It's a 3-2 now. Also dodging Heartless Act now because of the plus one, plus one counter. I mean, if we can't find the land on the draw, we can throw down another Regiment and uh, then do the uh, discard effect for the draw. It's their fourth land. Things are getting risky, right? Mono Black as well. Um, the Eye Twitch. Oh, no, Rakdos with Bastion in play. Okay. So enchantments, we can exile that, make it a 3-2. No blocks, it's a flyer, it has evasion. Yep. Yeah. We'll go to our hand. I toss the anatomy. Still no land. Ouch. Big time ouch skis. Six damage isn't bad. You know, obviously they're going to chump block the 4-3. We hit for two down to 14. They gain one back up to 15. We go down to 17. It's good value. I really like the Bastion. Um, you know, maybe we should have just learned for the, uh, the exile on the Bastion and not worried about the land. These are things were thawed, and I play too fast, right? I'm always just like, you know, kind of playing that commentator, commentator role, and uh, you, you rip through it and you miss things. So I don't know why they don't attack with the eye twitch as well. We'll have to sack the savior, bummer. Discard here is fine with us. The draw is fine too. It is hard to deal with for us as well. Um, just takes away from us dealing with the Bastion, right? So we are discarding a card and sacking. Bomber. Right, we take that damage. They get to learn here. We get the fourth land. Kill, Rankle. We'll take the Exile for Bastion. 
We attack. We double up. 6-5. Chump block. And uh, they did get rid of our selfless savior, so we're prone to removal now. That's quite frightening. Uh, and looking for the phoenixes. Like, where are you, phoenix? Where are you? All right. It's not the worst. We're still at 12. Hopefully we draw that fifth land. We can two drop plus three drop. Yes. Exiling their Bastion. Reduced to Memory is like a really good lesson card. Um, unfortunately, uh, due to oversight on my behalf, it wasn't included within the first deck, but we've got it uh, ripping in the second version here. Again, it's just uh, Double Professor, Sparring Regiment. This is an 8-7. Where's the Trample when we need it, right? Or the Haste, Phoenix! We have a 8.7% chance to draw Phoenix. If you want to download this uh, assistant that I have in the corner of my screen, I guess on this side, um, you know, that's free. Get that in my link tree link. It's called Magic the Gathering Arena Assistant by Aetherhub. The Heartless Act does burn our Magistrate. Our opponents turn two cards in hand. One's a land. That's great news for us. Uh, we do have the Balker here, Scalding uh, Showdown. Can take us for a rip. I want to call it Scalding Tarns for some reason. Speaking of Scalding Tarns, Unshaven Leg, if you're watching, I still have to send your card out to you. I will friggin' do that this week. So sorry. I'll give you uh, an extra little something with it because it's taking me so long. Uh, Unshaven Leg won one of our giveaways, and uh, that sucks. Okay, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wow. Just when I thought we had it locked down. We can probation it. Wow, this is not good. So it can't attack us. We get like a wiggle room turn. We can trade with this other thing. Plum the Forbidden. Okay, so we don't have to deal with that in an upcoming turn either. And we just chump block this. Oh, no way. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. They drew three lands. All right. Phoenix is good. What do we grab from our hand? Uh, our sideboard here. Another probation. We should play it smart. I don't know what they have in hand. Okay, so we're dodging Heartless Act now, potentially if these go through. I almost doubt it though. I almost doubt it. Nope, they're good. Heartless Act is no longer relevant. We're hitting for six. Can we top deck a Blade Historian? And we don't get to reveal their hand, we just get to choose it, right? So we don't know what they'd play. We don't know what they'd play. We have lethal next turn. Potentially. No. Why didn't they take the flyer? Why didn't they take the flyer for lethal? They could have taken the flyer and attacked us for three. And they don't sack our professor. They're just going to attack with it and we'll have to trade with it, right? Okay, so we're getting a chance, right? We have to capitalize on this. 
Oh, but they can cast that right now. Frig, that's so annoying. Good for them. So we need a learn card off the top. This is lethal. Three damage, don't have four, we learn. The Phoenix hits for four. As long as they don't have removal here. Come on. Holy Toledo! Holy Toledo! No, they've got it! <laughs> that went through! Eliminates. On their guy, they go up to five. Nice. Down to one. Okay, okay, okay. I love it. <laughs> Banger. 75% win rate. You know, top 100th. Uh, Boros learn, or lore hold learn, I guess. We're getting really good matches out of this as well. The Retriever Phoenix Sparring Regimen. Blessed be thy synergy. <laughs> Let's break down the deck. Spontaneous Combustion did not disappoint. We got a lucky win there, I think. Um, a couple lucky wins, I'm going to be honest. Uh, and I know in the comments, people freak out. They're like, how are these people in Mythic rank? Like, you're not allowed to ever make a mistake in this game. But, you know, it doesn't matter what level of player you are. We all are making mistakes on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, it's it's a mythic rank. It's not a, a million dollar tournament at the end of the day People are just grinding out matches having fun. They're probably watching uh, something else in the background You know, I, even I got distracted in today's video. I was watching uh, the charts, right? The tickers. Oh, by the dip, baby <laughs> And uh, you know, it's so easy to get distracted when you're, you know Just playing on your own computer with multiple screens and uh, you know that can kind of foster an environment in which you misplay a little bit more than you normally would right um so it's fine um you know and we learn from these these uh points of pain within our life right a uh, uh, lesson is best learned the hard way and uh you know losing is hard uh, much harder than winning so um you know it's, it's just roll with the punches right it's gonna happen and uh you know to others to us and uh, we just we just take what we can get so i hope you guys enjoyed the deck i've been loving this deck um you know it's great it's an original deck that can actually compete within the meta and you know, just rip your copies of Winota up. Just rip your Winota up. You don't need it. Just play this deck instead, right? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Have an amazing day. Uh, one might say a magical day. And we'll see you soon in the next.